Hey there guys, Vatstowo here. Today what I want to do is answer a question that you have absolutely heard before and maybe have even asked yourself. I feel like it's a very prevalent question in pretty much any community you go into. I see it being talked about from gas masks to guns to armored fighting vehicles to helmets, even on, well, pretty much any sort of civilian use item, like in that one episode of Bob's Burgers, spatulas. And as you've read in the title, that question is, what is the best thing? Uh, today, we will, of course, be focusing on gas masks. And now I will give you the only correct answer to that question. And you can even quote me on this. It is, for what? What makes the best gas mask, or the best anything, really, depends on a variety of different factors. Uh, for one, who is using it, and for what. I will call that purpose. The second point we'll cover today is the perceived value compared to the cost, which I will call budget. And the third and final point for today, uh, in this very oversimplified discussion of it, is, well, features. And I put that third because it's kind of the least important one. And this brings us to why I have the Avon M53 sitting here in front of me. I brought this thing out partly to flex my fancy new laser protective outsert. That thing is very cool. But the main reason I wanted to bring this thing out today was because in discussions of what the best gas mask is, this thing is usually brought up. Uh, this or the FM-54. But real quick, I'm sorry if you can hear birds outside. They just want to serenade you. They're just being polite. But yeah, anyhow, uh, specifically, I wanted to bring this thing out because of the first point that I was talking about earlier. Purpose. And well, as I kind of talked about earlier, to get a good understanding of a mask, you need to know what it was designed for and who it was designed for. So, for the Avon M53, who it was designed for was US SOCOM. And what it is designed for is to be used with SCBAs and PAPRs for land warfare. It's supposed to be tactically viable and compatible with pretty much any modern system like VPUs or comms. It was also designed with a degree of interoperability in mind. And by that, I mean it has both some parts that are interchangeable with other 50 series masks, like the outserts and the head harness, but it also can use NATO filters. It was, well, chosen like that because US SOCOM didn't want M61s. Oh, and finally, on top of it being used with SCBAs and PAPRs, it must also function as a normal APR mask. That's why it has that big VRU right on the front. So, really, to summarize, this thing is meant for special purpose stuff. Stuff that most people just don't need. However, within its purpose, and within its price range, this thing can't really be beaten. Now, there's an argument to be made for the FM-54, but frankly, I don't really care about the M-54. I'm here to talk about the M-53. But if you don't need both comms and a VPU at the same time, or if you don't plan on using a PAP or SCBA at all, this thing is absolutely not worth it. You're going to be way better served by a C-50. And it just so happens that the C50 is a lot cheaper. And this brings us to the second point of the video, perceived value versus cost, or budget. And, well, I've got here the Scott GSR, a mask the adoption of which has been controversial, to say the least. So, while I think this thing is a fairly decent mask, I'm still gonna say it's just a worse M50. I know that the statement that it's a fairly decent mask is probably a little controversial, but the idea that it's just a worse M50? Probably not very controversial. And because of that, well, a lot of people ask the question of why didn't Britain adopt the M50 instead of the GSR? I mean, it's just better. Now, there are some parts on the GSR that are better than on the M50, like I really prefer the bayonet system on the GSR over the M50, but that's beside the point. Anyhow, even Avon themselves asked why they adopted the GSR over the M50. Uh, when the GSR was adopted, Avon actually sent a letter to, I believe it was someone in the MOD. This letter pretty much just went like, 
hey, why, why did you do that? Our mask is just way better, and it's British made, so you get to keep the industry instead of uh, outsourcing it to Scott over in the United States. And so it's like, that's a pretty good point. And also, on top of that, I will add, Scott can't be trusted with military contracts. Like, look what happened when the M40 was adopted. They went with the Scott design, and Scott really messed it up so badly that they lost the contract to MSA and ILC Dover, who both submitted their own XM40s, but who wound up producing the Scott M40s. Anyhow... Other tangents aside, the adoption of the GSR came down seemingly mainly due to the perceived value compared to the cost. The British MOD looked at the M50 and said, well that's good, but it's expensive, it's more expensive than the GSR, which is alright. So they would rather have a cheaper alright mask than a more expensive good mask. Now whether that's how it turned out, or whether or not you agree that this is alright, again, that's beside the point. The reason I tell you all this is because I want to drive it home that budget is incredibly important. Like, it's oftentimes a deciding factor. Sometimes the best mask is a worse mask, just because of how much it costs. In a few minutes, we'll return to the GSR and M50, but for now, let's take a look at the OM2020 from Gumarni Zubri also known as the CM8M from Mira Safety. If you've been watching the channel for a little while, you probably know that I think this mask is terrible. In fact, I think that pretty much everything Mira Safety sells is terrible. I think that everything Gumarni Zubri made after the M10M is terrible. Now, and that really begs the question of why? And you might have seen my videos. I've got two videos talking about the OM90, CM7M, and OM2020, CM8M, on my channel, and that goes for about 40 minutes. In those videos, I go through every single component and tell you my thoughts on them, and compare them to other masks. Now, while I think this thing is horribly designed, going back down to almost every component, the main reason why I think this thing is so horrible is the cost. Now, Mira keeps their masks perpetually on sale because they're very reputable and not scummy, but even then, they still cost, like, 300 bucks. And that's, like, just for a face piece. You gotta pay more if you want a carrier or a filter. Like, you can get an M50 full kit for cheaper. Embarrassingly, I paid, like, 400 for my M50, and that's a kit with... Uh, two carriers, you know, a VPU, an internal microphone, an outsert. Like, yeah, it's the whole shebang. And I mean, like, this is post-COVID pricing. Uh, I remember the days back in late 2019 when an M50 cost less than 150 bucks. Like, if you paid what I paid for it, you got scammed. But those prices are never coming back, so don't hold out for them. I think it'll take, like, a decade for it to happen. So, you know, just find it for whatever price works for you. Anyways, tangents aside, this thing is just too expensive for what it is. And that goes for all of Mira's masks, whether it's the CM6M or the OM90 or the OM2020. If they were, like, 40 bucks, that I would say, like, go for it. You know, it would be a decent mask. And to repeat myself, that's the problem. They're not charging 40 bucks for these. They're charging hundreds of dollars. So to put this in perspective, they're charging essentially cry plate carrier prices for one of those, you know, Kevlar vests that you find at surplus stores, but it just doesn't have the Kevlar, so you gotta buy that separate. And now that I've spent way too long just repeating a admittedly simple concept. You guys probably understood the first time I said it. I'm coming back to the M50 and GSR. And with these, I would like to talk about the third point, features and ergonomics. And the reason I bring these back out is because on the civilian market, they cost about the same. And since they are in about the same price range, we can actually start to really care about those features. Like, the M50 is way more comfortable and way more lightweight. You can actually get the accessories for it. 
The GSR, it's way less comfortable. It's got that peripheral seal that's super uncomfortable. It's incredibly rigid. It's bulky. You know, there you can't find the accessories for it. The M50 only has that head harness. You can't put a different head harness on it. So if you don't like it, you're screwed. You know, the GSR, you can put any head harness on it as long as it's six point. So you see what I mean, right? Like, once you've got your purpose and your cost nailed down, then you can start caring about the features. And from here, I would like to hop into another opinion that might be controversial among gas mask collectors and tactical gear enthusiasts. An industrial half-face respirator with A2P3 filtering canisters and a pair of airtight goggles is a really solid option. They're super cheap, they're super common, so that makes the barrier for entry really low, and most importantly, they fucking work. Now, for tactical applications, it's not going to do the same things that like an M50, GSR, M53, M40, M45, MCU, M Millennium, any number of these masks, it's not going to do the same thing as that. However, it works. And that's the main thing that matters. Like, yeah, I would still say upgrade from that platform eventually. Go to something like a C50. Uh, when I recommend masks to people, I will check to see if they've got something already. And if they do, if it's something that's acceptable, like a half-face respirator or a pair of goggles, I'll tell them, look, focus on other gear that you need. Like, I was just talking to a girl the other day who wanted a C50, but she also needed rain gear. And she already had that exact setup that I was describing. It's a half-face respirator and some goggles. And I told her, buy the rain gear first. Come back to the C50 later. So, to summarize, even though it's not great like as a tactical gas mask that setup is affordable accessible and it works so with that i think i'm done ranting and raving for now i hope you guys found this video useful or informative or even just interesting i've wanted to make this video for quite a long time but i haven't really felt like i was ready to tackle it until now uh this one is actually partly scripted uh one of the very few videos on this channel that is and by partly scripted, I mean, like, I wrote bullet points I wanted to cover, and then I just ranted. And I feel like it kind of shows in this video, because I kind of just cover a point and then just go on a tangent or repeat that same point, like, three times. And it's, I'm not one for brevity. Even this outro, this is an outro, and I'm pretty sure it's gone on longer than, like, a minute now. But, uh, anyhow, I'll cut it here. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one, whenever that is.